So after making games in Godot for years now, I was getting curious about where it all began. I mean, the earliest version of Godot that I used was Godot 3, which was definitely great for its time. But what if we go further back? I'm talking about the first releases of the Godot engine. How was Godot in its early days? Now the first public release of Godot was in 2014, Godot version 1.0. Now I did try to get this version, but I couldn't find the compiled files in the Godot archive. I even tried to compile it from source, but that didn't work out either. So then I decided to use the 1.1 version, which was released a few months later after the first release. So I did manage to download this version, but I didn't quite want to make a game in it yet. And that's because wouldn't it be cool to see how far a game engine has come by making a game in its latest version versus its oldest and so I started making a game in Godot's latest version first which is version 4.2.2 at the time of recording this video and then we'll try to make that exact same game in Godot 1.1 and so since we're going to use the same assets for both games I started making the models in Blender first one for the enemy one for the player guns platforms and ground and walls since Godot 1.1 doesn't come with any primitive shapes as long as I'm concerned. And with the game models being done, I made a simple game level with the player and the enemy with some high level design techniques. And before you knew it, I was writing my first script. Now remember, we're going to make this exact same game in Godot 1.1, so I'm not gonna use any crazy stuff. So in the player script, we're moving the player with the character body 3D, doing the same thing in the enemy script, except it just moves by its own. And now we basically have a game on our hands, just need to add some gun logic and animations. So this is basically what we have to remake in Godot 1.1. Basically, we need to shoot these guys until they're pushed outside the level, in which case they'll despawn with a cool animation. And you'll get a score, which you can use to unlock new guns. Trust me, you want to try the new guns. They're pretty cool. Okay, but enough with that. Let's make this whole thing again in Godot 1.1 for some reason. Well, mainly because I want to know how it was to make a game in an open source game engine 10 years ago. And just so you know, I'm going through this version of Godot completely blind, so I don't even know if we can make this exact same game in it or not, but I'll try my best. And there we have it, Godot version 1.1. I'm gonna be completely honest, it does look way more different than I thought. So let's see, what do we have here? I can see that we are in the 3D view by default. We can also switch to 2D script and help. Okay, so we do have a similar thing in Godot 4. It's just integrated in the scripts tab. So I can identify most of these tabs, but what is resources? Guess we'll find out later. Okay, so let's add some nodes. I'm going to add a spatial node, which I'm guessing is going to be the node 3D. And let's add our 3D models. Okay, I guess not like that. So I think you need to manually import your 3D models, which is interesting. And now we have our 3D models in our file system, but it didn't assign the materials automatically for some reason and I couldn't use the materials exported from the blender. So yeah, not sure what I'm doing wrong here. So instead I exported all of my models in this format, which I've never used before and this time the material got exported with the mesh, but I had to change my textures to PNGs from JPEGs because for some reason my JPEGs weren't getting imported in Godot and so after that I basically added them one by one in the scene to make a simple level and so after adding the collision shapes it was time to start writing my first script in Godot 1.1. Okay so this does look pretty familiar actually. So just to test this out let's call the move and slide method and let's run this scene. No main scenes ever been defined. I see. So let's set our current scene as the main scene and try it again. Nope, that doesn't look like it's doing much. So after staring at the screen for 10 minutes straight, I realized that the process method won't run unless you set it in the ready method. And there's no such thing as move and slide here. You basically gotta call move and just make sure you call it in the fixed process, otherwise it won't work. So after that, I added the actions in the input map 
and wrote some camera code and we basically have a simple character controller on our hands and so basically with that out of the way it was time to add some guns to the game and animations now the fact that you've stayed this far in the video means you're interested in the Godot game engine in some ways just like myself so it would be really nice if you could okay i'll stop just subscribe if you want so back in Godot 1.1, I added an animation player node and honestly the animation tab looked quite similar. You do also have these keyframe buttons which I guess adds a keyframe just like the latest version. And so basically with that out of the way I added the gun animations like the shooting and the idle state. Now originally I wanted to use the animation tree but I didn't know how it worked so we're just going to use the animation player instead. And control the animation states with the code. So for example, if I want to shoot, I'm just going to say play the shoot animation. And so to make all of this work better, I added this code logic and as you can see, it works much better now. And so after that, I coded the logic to spawn the bullets, but as you can see, they're kind of floating in the air. And the reason for that is I needed to add the parent as a rigid body and not the rigid body as a child. But now if you just held down your left mouse button, it would just keep spawning the bullets. And the reason for that is because there's no is action just pressed here. So I had to create a logic that worked. And now we actually have a logic to control the fire rate. Now the next step was to add a linear velocity to the ball when it got instantiated. And so with this logic, whenever we shoot, the ball should go towards where we're looking. But you see the new problem was that the bullets weren't spawning from the point of the gun. And so I added a new spatial node that would act as the tip of the node. And now we can see that the balls are getting instantiated in the correct place. Now the next thing I did was to make some animations for the enemy and also made a simple logic for the enemy to follow the player and look at the player at all times. Now by no means this is perfect but it works fine. But now whenever the enemy is hit with a bullet it's not really smooth and so I made a simple logic in code to control the enemy whenever it's hit and as you can see it's much better now. And so basically with that out of the way, I added the logic that if the enemy gets pushed outside the level, it gets despawned and will spawn a new enemy in the level. I managed to do this using a signal from the area node. But first we're gonna make sure that it's actually an enemy using groups. And then we're gonna call the destroy function inside of that enemy, which I just made. Which is going to make sure that if it's done playing the destroy animation, and then it's gonna delete it from the scene. Which you can see works fine. Now to manage the score, I tried making an auto load, but it didn't work. For some reason, I couldn't call the auto load, even though it was defined in the project settings. So not sure what I'm really doing wrong here. So then I decided to use the parent node of the scene to handle the score and stuff like that, which worked fine. And for the UI, I added a control node with a label node under it with some custom fonts. And now we can see that for every enemy that we push outside the level, we'll get a score and we'll have a new enemy spawned in the level. Now the new problem was that the enemies would get stuck on walls. I tried to set the friction to zero but that didn't really do anything so it is what it is for now. Now the other problem is that whenever I hit an enemy, the other enemy would also play the hit animation. And the reason for that was the material on both of them are the same. I fixed this in Godot 4 by adding a new material to the mesh on each new enemy that I spawned. And I'm doing the same here but it doesn't work so I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. Anyways to add the text for the guns I tried using a label 3D like in Godot 4 but there was no such thing in Godot 1.1. So instead I'm making them in GIMP and then export them in Godot 1.1 to use it with the sprite node. So after making the text and exporting them into Godot 1.1, I set up the gun items one by one and attach the script to each one. But then I forgot to make it into a separate scene. And when I tried to do that, I couldn't find the option. That's unlike Godot 4 where you can make any node into a separate scene. Anyways, so this is the script for the gun item logic and it checks whether if the player is touching it or not and if we have enough score to actually get it. And each gun has its own unique properties. 
Now the next problem was that the balls would just get spawned and then stay there forever which could definitely impact the performance negatively. So I made a logic in code that would despawn the balls after some time and here you can actually see that in action. Now as the final step I made an end screen that would be shown to the player whenever it got hit by the enemy. Now the font is gonna be small because for some reason I couldn't increase it and so now you can see whenever the player touches the enemy the game's over. And so basically with that out of the way my game was done. Now the one thing I learned is that Godot has come a long way. Now obviously the old engine didn't feel as good as the latest one. Also, it was really interesting to see that a lot of core concepts have remained the same. Definitely much easier to make a game in God of 4, mainly because it was easier to import the models and navigate the engine editor, new features and stuff like that. It's just much more user friendly. So what did you think about this release of Godot? Tell me in the comment section. And as always, I'll see you soon.